Good evening. It's a great honour to be invited to speak at this memorial event. I'd like to start by paying my respects to Khadija, who I think we can agree has been a model of dignity and grace throughout what must have been a terrible ordeal. My connection to Jamal's story is that I'm a journalist who for the last eight years has been following the Saudi program to kidnap and kill dissidents and defectors living abroad. I regret to say I never knew Jamal personally, but I admired his journalism and I could see that he was a very remarkable man who certainly never deserved to die in the horrific way that he did. Now it is our solemn duty, the duty of the international community, to stand up for Jamal and make sure the people who perpetrated this terrible crime are brought to account. No one says it's going to be easy. We all know many governments, firms and individuals have deep interests in the status quo and do not wish to rock the boat. But the wild trajectory of MBS, the dire situation in Yemen, and the terrible impact of the Saudi-backed counter-revolution across the region no longer permits the luxury of procrastination. It is time to side with the right against the wrong, with the weak against the strong, and with the oppressed against the oppressor. It is time to get on the right side of history. For too long we have remained complacent about the injustices the Arab people are facing. For many years our leaders have propped up despots across the Arab world who deny the people their basic rights and force them to live in bondage, a modern day slavery. This is an evil of colossal magnitude which runs against core Western principles and against the values and interests of the overwhelming majority of ordinary people. This policy has corrupted us and destroyed faith in democracy. It has led to a massive wave of terrorism here on the streets of the UK as well as in many other European countries. Who can calculate the damage done by Saudi Arabia spending hundreds of billions of dollars across the world on a deeply intolerant version of Islam? Who can calculate the damage done to our democracy by Saudi corruption in major arms contracts? The most powerful opponents to reform are not just politicians and special interest groups in Washington and, L and London. They are also businessmen more interested in petrodollars than humanity and not prepared to do justice to Jamal or the Arabs, cost what it may. Meanwhile, many ordinary people who know about the tyranny and the war and are against the dictators do nothing to put an end to it. Instead, they sit down with their hands in their pockets, mumbling that they do not know what to do, and so they do nothing. There is a right and a wrong side in this situation, and no one belongs in the middle. Jamal was slain by a bloody tyrant, a homicide. If you were to ask MBS why, then like all dictators, he would reply to you, why not? This is a man who regards Saudi Arabia as his property, including the people, the land, the history, and everything that goes with it. Like every slave master, he studies human nature, and the nature of his enslaved people in particular. He wants to find ways to impress on them the boundlessness of slave territory and of his own limitless power and so preserve the wall of fear. This is why he ordered that Jamal, in effect, be executed in public 
just like people are beheaded in public in squares inside Saudi Arabia, to send a warning to dissidents and defectors everywhere. The time has come for the West to stand up for the Arabs, not for the despotic regimes that govern them. If we respect them, they will respect us. But if lobby groups and industry are allowed to dictate Western foreign policy in support of regimes whose days are numbered, this will undermine relations between us to the detriment of us all. The system which the tyrants depend on is already on its deathbed. The only question is how costly they are going to make the funeral. Every passing hour, MBS, Mr. Bonesaw, is violating the just and inalienable rights of his own people. And so every hour, he silently but surely is wetting the knife of vengeance for his own throat. Every word he says in support of the regime invites the sword and asserts the right of the rebellion of his people and people across the region. Jamal never supported violence. He did not even call for the overthrow of the regime. Instead, he pinned his hopes on reform on the international community and he expressed his views through his journalism. Without debate... Without criticism, no country can succeed. If the Saudi regime was built to last, it would have had nothing to fear from a humble journalist like Jamal Khashoggi. Thank you.